Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do our first example with a delta delta circuit. We're given the line voltage, 120 volts with a phase angle of 0 degrees, and we're given the impedance of the load at 10 minus J5. That looks like a capacitive impedance. And we're trying to find the phase and the line currents. So let's start with the phase currents IAB, IBC, and ICA. Since we're given VAB, we can then say that the phase current, let's do it over here, we can say that IAB can be found by taking the phase voltage, or not the phase voltage, but the line voltage, VAB, and dividing it by the load impedance. Now, we know that VAB must be exactly the same as VAB, both in magnitude and in phase, because it's a delta-delta circuit. So this can be written as VAB divided by the impedance, and VAB is equal to 120 with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by the impedance which is given to us with the real and imaginary portion. There we go, so 10 minus J5 and of course we have to convert that into magnitude and phase angle. So let's rewrite it. So this is equal to 120 with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by that would be 125, take the square root of that, that's 11.18 in magnitude with a phase angle of, looks like a minus one half, so 0.5, that's uh, 26.57 degrees, minus 26.57 degrees. And so we can then say that IAB is equal to 120, divided by 11.18, which is 10.73, with a phase angle of, well, when we bring that to the top, that would be a positive 26.57 degrees. Of course, that's in terms of amps. So there's our first phase current. Now we're going to find our second current by offsetting it by 120 degrees. So therefore, we could say that IBC is equal to same magnitude, with a phase angle of 26.57, subtract 120, that would be minus 93.43 degrees. And of course, that would be in terms of amps. And then finally, the last, the last one, that would be ICA is equal to, again, same magnitude. So that's, with a phase angle, subtract 120 from that. Uh, minus 120, that's uh, minus... 213.43 degrees. Of course, that's also in terms of amps. So there we have it. Those are the three phase currents through the three uh, load branches of the load. Now we want to find the line currents, IA, IB, and IC. And just like with a wide delta circuit, there's the same kind of relationship between the line current and the phase current. We know that the line currents lag the phase currents by 30 degrees, and the magnitude of them are the square root of three times the phase current. In other words, the line current is equal to the square root of three times the magnitude of the phase current with a phase angle shift, whatever the phase angle is of the phase current, and we're su supposed to subtract 30 degrees from that. So that's the relationship, which means that IA is equal to the square root of three times IAB, with a phase angle, whatever the phase angle is for AB, subtract 30 degrees from that. So this is equal to the square root of the 3 times IAB, which is 10.73. And with a phase angle of 26.57, subtract from that 30 degrees. And that's, of course, in amps. So we can say that IA is equal to... 10.73 times the square root of 3, which is 18.58, with a phase angle of, that would be minus 3.43 degrees, and that's in terms of amps. Okay. Now we're ready to write down the line currents for the other two, B and C. So IB is equal to the same magnitude, 
subtract 120 degrees from that, which is minus 123.43 degrees in terms of amps. And finally, the I sub C is equal to 18.58 with a phase angle of minus 243.43 degrees. And again, in terms of amps, and there is the third line current. So you can see that the phase currents, all you have to remember with a delta-delta circuit, that there's no difference between the line and the phase voltages, so that the phase current is simply the line voltage divided by the impedance. And in the case of the line currents, we find them the same way we do for a wide delta circuit. We take care of the difference in the magnitude. The line current is the square root of three times the magnitude of the phase current, and we subtract 30 degrees for the phase lag, the line current versus the phase current. And that is how we find the currents in a delta-delta circuit.